you're anything like me, you spent the early 1990s playing countless 16-bit classics. I remember that time quite well. It was a time when I would rent games, hunt down video game magazines, and share secrets with my friends. By far one of the greatest and most popular consoles in those days was the Sega Genesis, which offered tons of great games that captivated my attention. So in honor of that time, I've decided to put together a list of the top 10 Sega Genesis games ever. But before I get into it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more retro gaming content. And now, let's get into the top 10 Sega Genesis games of all time. Coming in at number 10 is Shadowrun, a cyberpunk classic that really stood out for the time it came out. It's an extremely unique action-adventure RPG hybrid of sorts, with tons of suspense and mystery that adds to the incredible gameplay. Though it is based on the same source material, this one is completely different from the SNES version of the same name, and that really surprised me back in the day. In this one you pick from one of three archetypes at the start, Samurai, Decker, and Gator Shaman, and they each play completely differently. What in the world is a Gator Shaman anyway? Instead of the point-and-click style of the SNES version, there's a lock-on targeting system that's a lot more clean and less frustrating, and it's really easy to navigate around without having to do so many manual things like opening individual doors. The size of this game was also huge at the time, and it can give you 30 to 40 hours of gameplay to complete. It also has a classic soundtrack I can still remember, and that adds a lot to its futuristic presentation. This is a completely distinct game for its era. Nothing else was even remotely like it, and I think that's why I still love it so much. I rented this one so many times to see if I could get further than I did in the last time, but I never did beat it. I'll probably have to rectify that one of these days. The ninth greatest Sega Genesis game is Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Warrior, the final Shinobi game on the platform. It brings back everyone's favorite ninja, Joe Musashi, who senses the presence of the criminal organization Neo Z, which threatens the world once more. This one combines all the greatest elements of the Shinobi franchise in a single experience. The action is smooth, the special items are interesting and fun to use, and the difficulty level was just right. This is a game me and my friends played and talked about a lot, and this was back when nothing was cooler than ninja stuff. When this one came out, it definitely got a lot of hype, and I think it lived up to it. It was just as good as its action platformer counterparts on the SNES. I especially loved how the gameplay was so varied. I mean, you had normal platforming stages, the horseback stage, and even a stage on the futuristic hoverboard things in the water. It's true that a ton of retro gaming freaks think the second Shinobi game was much better, but this is the one I keep going back to. All seven levels are fantastic, and it's one of the best 16-bit platformers of all time, as far as I'm concerned. At number eight, we have Arcus Odyssey, an isometric action-adventure game that captured so much of my attention way back in 1991. This one had you crawling through caverns, exploring fortresses, unlocking secret passages, and overcoming bosses with attacks and magic. The thing that probably stands out the most to me about it is that it combined all of my favorite aspects of all the genres I loved into a single game. The overhead action-oriented gameplay reminded me of my favorite adventure games, and the story and themes were reminiscent of my favorite RPGs, and the ricochet attacks made the game seem almost like an overhead shooter game. I loved how four different archetypes were available to you, and the fact that two players could play simultaneously really made this one unique. It was so fun to make your way through it with a friend. There just weren't many action-adventure games in this era with a two-player mode in the first place. This one really stood out among the few action-adventure titles released on the Genesis. It had all the best elements of the games I loved at the time, and it's a really overlooked game in general. I can't recommend it more. I consider Sonic the Hedgehog 2 the 7th greatest Sega Genesis game of all time. And I'll be honest, I'm not even the biggest Sonic fan in the world, but hey, this is a Genesis list, 
so you already knew at least one Sonic game would be here. I know there's lots of debate about it, but I think 2 was the best in the whole series. I love the level design, and the fact that both the level and game length was about twice as long as the first game really made Sonic 2 special. The Night Casino stage was my absolute favorite, and its colorful visuals with the black background looked super great. As a whole, I really think the vibrant colors made this one of the best looking games on the system, and it honestly looks a lot better than many Genesis games that came after it. This one also introduced Tails, Sonic's sidekick, and the second player can even control him to an extent. I also enjoyed the special 3D stages that were put together extremely well. They weren't just a gimmick either, they were fun and progressively ramped up in difficulty. Perhaps my favorite addition was the Spin Dash, which was introduced here for the first time, and it's hard to articulate how fun this was to use. It allowed you to fly through certain areas without having to build momentum, and made the game seem even faster and more fun than the original. The only improvement I think this one could have used was a slightly higher difficulty level, but other than that, it's a fantastic platformer that represents the Genesis extremely well. Rank 6th is Contra Hardcore, where one of Konami's flagship series came to a Sega platform for the very first time. And I have to be honest, when this one came out, I was totally stunned, because I just assumed the Contra games would belong to Nintendo forever. This one absolutely doesn't disappoint, because it's filled with all the best aspects of Contra, including well-designed levels, intimidating enemies, and awesome weapons. In fact, this one had the best and most diverse array of weapons of any Contra game up until that point. Any other fans of the Psychic Blaster? That one was awesome, but so was the Spread Gun, which does tend to come in useful when you're trying to run away from a moving wall of fire. You can now carry and toggle between up to four weapons at a time, as well as bombs, and this allowed you to adjust your weapons on the fly to suit your situation. As far as I see it, this made the game so much more complex and fun. Contra Hardcore provides more action-packed levels, but this time there's a branching storyline with multiple endings. These are dictated by key decisions made throughout the game's story, and this was something the series had never done before. I guess some fans actually didn't like this style, but I personally thought it was awesome. I also thought the bosses stand out a lot from those in the other Contra games. I mean, who could forget this mechanical contraption running you down on the Motoroid hoverbike? The innovation in gameplay solidified this game as one of the top action platformers on the Genesis. The fifth greatest game on the Sega Genesis is Gunstar Heroes, a running gun side-scrolling shoot-em-up game that I can't get enough of. This game was created by Treasure, which also made a lot of other great games, and it's especially appropriate in this case because this game is an actual treasure. This one has you making your way through seven stages, each with different themes, different varieties of enemies, and different bosses. But Gunstar Heroes is cut from a completely different cloth compared to other shoot 'em ups because it has an extremely unique weapon system. You combine the four starting weapons together with others to create hybrids, resulting in 14 total unique weapons. And just like Contra and Metal Slug, you can take advantage of the two-player simultaneous gameplay and fight your way through this one with a friend. You can even tackle the first four levels in any order you wish, which definitely was a creative way to make sure each playthrough was slightly different. Beyond that, the stages themselves are freaking unique. There's no better way to say it. Some of them have you moving to the right and blowing up enemies, others have you scaling the walls to keep enemies from gunning you down, and one even has you flying through outer space in a special vehicle. The gameplay variety was off the charts for a shoot 'em up, and the visuals were just fantastic. Especially noticeable is the incredible graphical animations of the characters and enemies, which excel beyond nearly every other Genesis game out there. There were even multi-limbed enemies where different pieces of the boss moved in different ways, and that seemed like something from another dimension. It was a visual spectacle that completely blew me away, and it still holds up now. There's a reason why GamePro called it an assault on your senses back then, and they meant assault in a good way, 
this is an absolute must play and probably still doesn't get the credit it deserves. Coming in at number 4 is Shining Force 2, an innovative tactical RPG that built upon what the original did so well. In fact, outside of the first Fire Emblem game, this was one of the first tactical RPGs ever made, and it sure didn't disappoint. This was an epic RPG that featured fantastic characters, an interesting story, and really fun grid-based strategic gameplay. Unlike the first Shining Force game, this one is much more open-ended and it doesn't have chapters. It's also much longer than the original, and I think the story is superior as well. So as far as I see it, this one improved upon every element of the original Shining Force and completely stood out on the Genesis in 1993. And honestly, it still holds up well today too, especially because the battles play out so quickly, unlike many other RPGs from this period. The one-on-one -on -one battles was such a cool part of the game that was unforgettable. They just made it totally different from any other experience in the genre, and the character portraits alongside the dialogue gave you a deeper appreciation for the characters and story. And as far as the story goes, I actually thought it was really creative because it avoided many of the tropes from other games of this kind, like having an evil empire and being sent to save the princess and such. For my money, Shining Force 2 was the greatest tactical RPG of its era, and that was such a big deal considering the Genesis had so few RPGs in general. For me it was the perfect game at the perfect time, and it's still worth replaying. The third best game on the Sega Genesis is Castlevania Bloodlines, where Konami's biggest series made its debut on the platform. And just trust me when I tell you this one is cut from a little bit of a different cloth than the other Castlevania games. Because this one features two new characters that travel across Europe to hunt down Elizabeth Bartley, who seeks to resurrect Dracula once again. John wields a whip and can use it to circumvent gaps, whereas Eric uses a spear and can execute high jumps. Both characters actually play very differently, and can be used in creative ways to travel through branching paths that gave the adventure some variety. This game was a dream come true to me in so many ways. It has a striking resemblance to the first Castlevania game, and the soundtrack fit each stage perfectly while still retaining the flavor of the series, but it's still its own thing too. The graphics are honestly the genesis at its best, with the dark flavor being perfectly executed in the stages, enemies, and animations. Some of the boss sprites just look amazing too. The most unforgettable in my mind was that gargoyle you fight on the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Everything about this encounter was exciting, and there's plenty more where this came from. Castlevania Bloodlines was a total masterpiece, and by far one of the best Castlevania games ever made. The fact that Konami put in two characters that played differently was such a great treat that made this one special, and I still can't get enough of it. If you're a Genesis collector, you have to pick this one up. It's off the charts good. At number 2 is Crusader of Senti, the exact game the Sega Genesis needed to show that it could deliver in the action-adventure genre. This is an overhead title that has you controlling Corona and the animal friends he finds along his journey. Each of them gives him a specific power that helps Corona through various obstacles, and it was a lot of fun hunting them down. Combining two of them together also gave you fun abilities that made you more powerful. I loved how big this game was. It featured a huge world with lots of unique areas and really well-designed dungeons. It just had that same kind of magic that made many of the best adventure games great. And many people say this is a total Zelda knockoff, but if it really is, I can accept that because I love both this and Zelda. Crusader of Senti doesn't get nearly the credit it deserves because it came out super late in the life cycle of the system, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the best games on the Sega Genesis. It was honestly hard for me not to rank this one number one, but one Sega Genesis game just managed to beat it out. The best Sega Genesis game of all time is Phantasy Star 4, one of the best RPGs of the 16-bit era. It was so refreshing to see a game of this caliber appear on the platform, and it's definitely the Genesis game I keep going back to most. The combat system was awesome, 
with an easy to use interface and great combat animations that show your characters jumping forward to deal damage. The combat animations on both ally and enemy sides is fantastic, and the art design brilliantly combines futuristic themes with a classic anime style. I loved how the macro system also allows you to customize your characters to your liking, so every player could set things up their own way. Very few other RPGs had anything like this, and it helps you streamline the battles. The sprites and visuals are just beautiful too, with character portraits and storyline sequences that were way ahead of their time. It uses kind of a comic book style presentation that really was the forerunner to full motion video cutscenes. These sequences really immersed the player into the story, and made the game seem much closer and so much more real than anything that existed at that time. And man, believe me when I say the soundtrack of this game is off the charts too. It's honestly my favorite score on the Genesis, and these melodies are still stuck in my head. Fantasy Star 4 is every bit as good as the best SNES RPGs, and it's unfortunate that so many RPG fans still haven't played it to this day. Every single fan of the genre should go back and play it, and I really hope that the game is remastered someday. This list was really hard to put together, because let's face it, there are a lot of great games on the Sega Genesis that didn't quite make the cut. I strongly considered Streets of Rage 2, Landstalker, Earthworm Jim 2, and Shining Force for this list. But there's lots of other great ones, so I want to hear from you. What do you think about my top 10 Sega Genesis games list? Which games do you think I missed or rated too highly? Let me know in a comment below. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell for more retro gaming content. If you want early access to the videos I produce and other perks, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon patron or via the YouTube join feature.